Hi guys, in this video I will show you how to create a relation column in Back Endless Console between two different data tables. Before we jump into Back Endless Console and uh, you can see how it is done, let's talk a little bit about the actual theory and, uh, and describe what the relationships are. So suppose there is a table called person that defines just some basic or in some cases not so basic information about people in the most trivial form this could include name age perhaps social security number phone number just various other properties that would be associated with a person and let's say that person just like any one of us would live uh, in a city well some people may live in a in a town some people may live uh, in some remote areas but for the simplicity's sake there is also a city and uh, a city may have its own properties, such as the population size, it may have the geographic coordinates, it may have some areas of interest, you name it. But technically speaking, a city is a different entity than a person. So in order to create a relationship between a city and the person, we could define that at the database level. And that relationship could go both ways you know a person may point and reference a city likewise a city may reference a person which way the relationship is going really depends on number of different factors but we're not review that in, the, in this video so in this case uh, here let's say that the relationship goes from person to a city uh, relationships could be of different kinds. There could be one-to-one -one relationships, such as in our case, you know, a person would live in one city. So this would uh, be a one-to-one -one relationship. Let's say a person has multiple residences and there may be multiple cities. In this case, that relationship could be one to many. Once again, for the simplicity's sake, in this video, I'll be showing you how to create a relationship that is one-to-one. -one. Uh, a relationship from the backendless perspective also can be or must be identified with the name of a column. So that uh, column here, we could say it is going to be called just city or it could be called uh, city of residence. Completely up to you. You get to define the schema. So if we were to define a column called city and that column is of a special kind, which is relationship, it would point to an object in the city database. So here's the, the actual structure that is visualized uh, on your screen and now let's see how we can implement it uh, or declare it in the backendless database to do this uh, we need to have some data in the database first of course we could have created it all by hand but i'm going to import a um, some data into the application so i'm going to switch to manage and then select import and uh, when I click the browse button, I'm going to select uh, a zip file that contains all of the data. You have already done this if you watched other videos that uh, we have in this how to uh, playlist. So I've select this zip file, click import, and Backendless starts importing all of the data into the database. Uh, we can check the status of this import if we go to files and then select import. And then now, uh, since there are some CSVs are present, the import is in progress we can click on this edit file for the log and uh, this is the log uh, we see that there is a line that says importing finished which means all the data has already been imported in fact if we refresh uh, it's going to be just the zip file that we imported and the log file in the data section so i'm going to click on the data we see that there are three data tables and there is the city country and country language we will be working with city so to to replicate what we did earlier in that primitive diagram, let's also create a table called person. So in here, what I, what I did is I clicked the plus icon to create a new data table, and uh, we will name it person. The table is created. Backendless console asks you if you want to switch to schema editing. Yes, we do. And let's add some basic properties such as name. It is going to be a string. We could also add age, which will be a number and or integer. And most importantly, now we will need to create the actual relationship column between person and the city. To do this, click the new uh, menu item. And uh, let's say it is going to be 
city of residence. The type is going to be data object relationship. So whenever you have a column that points to another data table to define that relationship, uh, this is the one, this is the type you need to select, data object relationship. And then the related table is city. It is selected by default because all the cities are sorted alphabetically. This just happens to be the first one. And the cardinality, which is one to one or one to many, we will want to keep it as one to one. You click create and you can see now there is a column city of residence and it's a data relation that points to city. At this point, the relationship is established. And once you start working with data in table person, you can use Backendless API to retrieve related city for that person. That retrieval can be done either at the same time when you retrieve the person or it can be done later. There are different APIs available for that purpose. Uh, we will be re uh, reviewing these APIs in another video because here I just wanted to focus on establishing that relationship so that column is created. If we switch back to data browser, there are no data in the person table, but you can see that there is a column that that is uh, named city of residence. It actually shows that the relation to city. Notice, notice that this little uh, red line that represents one to one relationship. Whenever you create one to many, it will show three lines just to differentiate it from the one to one relationship. So it's it's very straightforward to create these relationships between uh, dif different data tables in Backendless. And uh, in other videos, we'll review how to actually create these relationships between different objects uh, using Backendless console or using the APIs. But that's it for now. Thank you, and as always, happy coding.